and we are now playing the intro. You're listening to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. Hello and welcome to eLearn Chat, our new podcast featuring prominent leaders, shakers and movers in the e-learning and training industry. <laughs> Your co-hosts are Rick Zanotti and Terrence Wing. Uh, Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti and this is eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And today we are joined by Terrence Wing and Don Spear of Open Sesame. I've got them both on a shot over here. Hi, hi guys, how are you doing? Great, great. They're transmitting live from ASDD 2011 in Orlando, Florida. They're at the convention center. Now, Don is with us today. Um, he is the CEO of Open Sesame. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you're also one of the founders or the founder of PetSmart. Yes. One of our favorite yes. places. You know, we're getting a little bit of static right now on you guys. It should go away soon. I think it's something with the... Um... You just have to wait for that, that train to leave. There it goes. Okay, static's gone. Sorry about that, Don. I was asking... Um, you're the CEO of Open Sesame, and I believe you were one of the founders or the founder of PetSmart. Great. Actually, I helped the classmates start uh, PetSmart in 1986 after business school. Great. So, uh, we enjoy that. I think that's where I got the startup bug is to uh, you know, go and start help a, start a, a business that would really kind of change the industry, which is what we want to do with Open Sesame, too. Sounds good. So how did you how did you transition from something like a PetSmart over to Open Sesame? Totally different fields. Like totally different fields. You know, uh, I've always been involved in training all my life. It's an important part of I think anyone's development. Uh, after I finished undergraduate, I was a submarine officer in the nineteen eighties. So I thank you for your service. Time. You're welcome. And uh, so I spent a lot of time. Uh, in training, learning how to run a nuclear reactor, and then of course how to drive a submarine, and, and throughout the whole submarine career, uh, training was a very important aspect of uh, what we do every day. In fact, the military is part of the industry. It's not flat. It's part of And I think that that really is what I enjoy most about uh, any business that I've been involved in, and that is helping people to progress and providing the, the platform or the direction for training. And then at PetSmart, I was in charge of uh, store operations. And if you can imagine opening 250 stores in about uh, five or six years, and I think now they're up to around a thousand stores. Uh, there's a lot of people to be hired, a lot of people to be trained. Of course, in the retail business, there's a significant amount of, uh, of turnover. So training is a very important part of any business, especially those with a lot of people. And that's where I really uh, you know, think to uh, enjoy training and you know, see how so uh, when we started uh, Open Sesame, it, it came from uh, a business uh, called Google, which is a long learning management system, it's, and that's a, a platform to train people in the electrical industry. Um, and so Open Sesame was just a natural outgrowth of figuring out how to uh, collect the thousands and thousands of courses that are available. <laughs> over the internet into one central marketplace. They're searching for those to go and easily compare them, review the catalog, uh, even take uh, snippets of the course, sometimes review the entire course. So uh, Open Destiny is, is uh, essentially just an extension of the experiences I've had, but also the, uh, the goal to, to unlock e-learning, make it much more accessible, and share amongst all the companies that have created training and for those that are trying to sell their training, uh, single, simple location. So who, who would you say is your, your primary customer for, for Open Sesame? Oh, hold on, we're having a little bit of a sound issue. HR training managers that work in uh, all the... How does that, does that work a little bit better now? No, we're just getting lag. Um, he had, he had asked who your customers were and, and kind of faded out. If you could re-answer, that'd be great. Okay. okay, sure. So our primary customers are people 
who are uh, HR and training managers, uh, typically in small, mid-sized, and large companies, so typically different who already have a learning management system for their company. And they're searching for third-party content, content that they wouldn't necessarily build themselves, such as uh, safety training, uh, sexual effort prevention training, uh, soft skills like uh, conflict resolution or proper etiquette on the telephone. So uh, general topics, uh, specific topics, but in courses that uh, many different companies could use. And in many cases, it's just a lot less expensive to be able to, to buy one of those courses uh, to have to deal with themselves. And so Open Sesame's target today uh, just at that time. Uh, you know what's creative, you know, what's about, creative about your approach is how your content's developed. Can you tell us a little bit about sure. the well, sources? Well, uh, great. Well, well, uh, uh, where do you see uh, some of the term is crowd? So we essentially uh, a lot of companies all over the world. We have people that are individuals that are free courses and they post those there. Of course, they get to set the price and the discount they would take for multiple seats. But we also have uh, larger. Uh, e learning content creators like Portico, and they have a library that are available to sell today. That are available, but they provide a lot of help today. Okay, this new technology is going to give us the best. You know, you know, guys, we're getting um, we're getting so really. We believe that this methodology will give us not only the broadest selection. Yeah, we're getting. I'm getting. I'm getting somebody talking next to you, which is coming in pretty loudly. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid that. I guess we can talk louder. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. It's uh, what we're getting. What we're getting is a lot of uh, Skype lag, uh, or internet lag. Oh, internet. Maybe it's something from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> does, this, uh, does this work any better? Uh, it's a little better. You know what, Don? We're definitely going to have you on another time when we have clean audio with you, because that way um, we don't lose the message, because it's really interesting, and, and it's getting cut out a lot. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> so do you want to keep you, going here, or do you want to... Well, we can go a little bit longer, but... Okay. I'm, a, no, no I'm problem. But I'm afraid we're the connection is really slow. Yeah, it's, uh, but it, I think there's a, you know, we're in this big building. There's a lot of metal here. Yeah. Probably not getting the best, uh, best connectivity. No, it's it's it, really, really I'm, I'm getting, getting every, every other, other word, word you guys, you guys are, are saying. saying. Yeah, we hear we hear you. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I, think I wonder if I should. There's a lot, you know, we're in this big building. A lot of metal. Here. Probably not getting. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the, the picture, picture is freezing, freezing a lot. lot. In, fact, In fact, it's frozen. Uh, there you okay. go. Yeah, we can get, we can get here. Yeah, that's, that's where it's so, so, so the, the transmission from, from this end is going, going well, well, but... but, 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 but yeah, how's the audio sounding now? Can we give you a... How, how about this? One, two, three, four... That, that, that's, that's clean. clean. Yeah, okay. Good for now. We're going to have to and, and you know, you know what? what? Then it just went, went and it went, went bad, bad again. again. Literally, literally what, what, what I'm, I'm hearing, hearing oh, gone. gone. Hey, Terrence. Okay, we're, we're here, right? Okay, that's clear. So it looks like the best approach is going to be to, to uh, reschedule this. Yeah, that's clearer. You're you're actually clearer right now, but no video. You don't have any video right now. It's Skype. You don't know which you know. We can we can have a totally different path getting to get you now. <laughs> that's true. Okay, well you know that's the beauty of editing, right? Edit, edit. Well, actually we don't edit this. Oh, you don't edit it. <laughs> no. Really, it's a, it's a live show. Oh, but how do you record it? Oh, we're rec we're recording as well, so we're we're doing both. I can I can I can edit to a point the recording. But I have no video from you, Terrence. So I'm pause the video. She's saying just do audio. Okay, there you go. Thanks a lot, man. Okay, I got your video now. Rick. Yeah. Rick, you want to just put out a video? Uh, do we want to what? 
did you want to try it without video? Well, right now your audio is good. Uh, you may have gotten a better Skype line. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll continue working then. Good. Okay. When do we go? I guess the next time we lose the signal, we might as well just call it call it a day. Yep, that's fine. And um, so, so we'll give that a shot. shot. Cause All right. Anyway, so I, and Don, I apologize, but next time we'll definitely have you on. You know, when you're in back in your offices, and um, and we'll definitely have a better signal then. Oh, no problem. So uh, you know the definition of technology, right? Uh, yes. What's that? Technology is technology is stuff that doesn't quite work right yet. <laughs> if, it, if it worked perfectly, they wouldn't think about it like technology. Uh, that, that's how it works. So like our cell phone, we don't think about technology. That's exactly anymore. right. So only 4G. You know, or something. Uh, uh, all the stuff that's at the beginning, but as soon as it works all the time perfectly, you don't think about it as that. Yeah, it's just a part of life. Right. So, but to which which question do you want to back up to? Um, well, you were you were explaining. Are you still with us, Rick? Yes. Okay. You were explaining a little bit on the, the model of procurement. And oh yes. Why, well, how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just start from the top. So uh, the model for open sesame really is to have the broadest selection of courses available anywhere in the world. And uh, we believe the sourcing method, which is to open it up to anybody to post their courses, is going to provide that crowdsourcing uh, uh, opportunity. And then we'll get the broadest. Frankly, we also think we're going to get the freshest collection. Mm -hmm. You sure. think about many courses that people have built over the last five or six years that are being sold in the library today. Uh, those are updated all the time. They are they're expensively updated. But this way, we're able to get people that will uh, create courses that they see a need for and place them on open sesame. Uh, we won't get not only the broadest, but the freshest collection. We already have, I think I said, over 1,500 courses. Uh, about 100 of those are from China, and Chinese already, which is pretty interesting. We built the site and our idea for the business from the beginning, ground up to be a global business. In fact, we announced yesterday that we added six more languages uh, that the site is available in today. And uh, people can post courses in any language. But today we already uh, support the seven major languages around the world. So we, we are excited about the opportunity not just to get lots of courses, but to get the freshest and the best courses, and then to allow the community, the buyers of the courses, uh, to rate those, to see which ones they believe are the best you know, before they've taken them or distributed them or after they've taken them. And we think that this will also help improve the quality of the course content in the e learning industry. Now, with the as a e-learning designer, would I be providing any additional support to come on to Open Sesame to build the course, or how does that work? Well, today we don't provide uh, e-learning guidance with regards to structural design uh, or graphics and things of that nature. Uh, we would provide technical support, so if there's something that you have a problem with, uh, technically, for example, if you're Swarm, uh, is it working properly, you can't get it to load into uh, Sesame to run through our automated test, we'll provide that. Uh, but we haven't yet set up a, uh, a program or any services to help uh, designers to do that. But that's a, an idea that may you know, create a second opportunity for people that might want to offer the services uh, as consultants or, de or, or design consultants uh, that we would just provide you know, kind of a, a, a space that they could uh, get together or know each other and do that kind of stuff. But our goal really is to be, if you would, uh, you know, the eBay uh, of online courses where we're the, we're the platform, it's simple to use, it's fast, it's easy, it's secure so that designers don't have to worry that their content is going to be exposed out you know, into, into the wild so somebody can take it and uh, use it somewhere else. Uh, and that's what our real focus is today. But I think there'll be lots of other ancillary opportunities, uh, whether that's to help course designers or uh, to help people figure out how to semi-customize the things that they built. Well, I think what you did is a very clever idea because you also don't force people to buy a well, thousand courses or a hundred courses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's the other thing we think that will be successful is that people can just buy the courses they need and the quantity they need when they need them. So one of uh, one of our guys, Tom Turnbull, always says, "Yes, we're we're changing the model from." Uh, cable television and Comcast, where you have to buy all the channels you know, every month to just find the, the course that you need or the show that you need to see for that. So we think that uh, that'll be a big change. And we've heard a lot of uh, feedback from the industry already that that's what they want. I think that's a that's a really good idea, manage? too. Because just like, just like when you buy cable TV, you have 245 channels of mostly garbage, and you can't get rid of the ones you don't want. 
but and and same with a lot of the e-learning providers yeah. where, where you go by a library of a thousand courses of which you may only need 10 or 20 of them so this is i think a, a really good idea actually quality of the courses if anybody can you know publish a course as a as a consumer hr professional looking at building my curriculum how do i make sure that besides taking a course myself but but screening it but how do i make sure i'm not wasting my time by screening or sure. by an amateur good, good question well, really we check uh quality at, at a couple of different levels the first level is technically mm -hmm. so in order for someone to actually load their course into our system it has to run through all the SCORM and icc tests the automated tests because uh, if it won't load, uh, then it won't it won't play in another LMS. So that's one of the things we test first to detect. Second, is uh, as today started. Oh, hold on, we're getting a we're getting bad audio right now. We're looking at and hand betting. Okay. Oh, how's it coming now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's okay. Eight. Now it's okay. You were you said your first you point, right? and then uh, we lost you on the second point, the embedding. Okay. Okay. And so if you're if you're watching this or or participating via the back channel, uh, Kelly from Open Sesame is monitoring the back channel, so on Twitter. So try not to post anything to the Justin T to bring that for this show. But she posts her comments directly into Twitter, and Kelly will be able to uh, direct us any of your any of your questions. Great. So the so the second level quality is basically we're, we're, uh, reviewing the courses for uh, the look and the feel, and uh, so does it have uh, professional level? And uh, in most cases, almost all cases, because the courses we're getting today are for people that are already selling their courses online, the quality is good. It isn't like a whole bunch of people just decided to no movies in their spare time, you know, uh, at home. So uh, that that's an important element. And then the third piece, which is really uh, dependent on the quality of the cards that they use. So is the number of different and in that course appropriate for you to be an expert for all the different courses that we have. Uh, but we believe, uh, just like in other marketplaces, that most of that all of that testing and all of you will come from people using the using the product or using that course. Sure. So we have that okay, we're losing we're losing audio guys. Ability for uh, people who have taken the course for we have Okay, the audio the audio is really coming in badly. Because we're getting you good. Yeah. How's this? One, two, three, four, five. It's good. Five, six, it's good seven, now, eight. but the minute we start going on a long stream, it's breaking up quite a bit. Okay. Maybe it's looking for a break. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's it's uh it's definitely I can hear parts of it and then it just disappears. It gets okay. very, it's very broken. I wonder if they have uh, you know some of these things they have. And with uh, chokes, yeah. so if you're trying to like, if they think you're going to download a whole movie or something, they choke it down. Oh, know. they so do. They, yeah, they do that in the convention centers. Yeah, maybe they just have shorter answers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are we doing okay right now? Right now, it's okay. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so shorter answers. So uh, the the other thing, uh, or the other thing is, like I said, I think the community that as we're building it will allow there to be feedback, so that people will be able to see who likes what. It's the same thing in Facebook when you see you know, how many likes somebody has or the star rating in Amazon. I use that when I buy stuff on Amazon. So we think the community and, and the wisdom of that crowd will, will cause the best content to rise to the top. And that was actually going to be my next question for you, too, was what, what is the social element that you said there's some like buttons that are, are in there as well? Are, is there ability to leave comments, uh, to, to grade it, things along those lines? Right. So uh, there, there is for the individual courses. That doesn't mean that the person taking the course in the LMS of the company will see that. Uh -huh. Those comments and that's, that uh, capability is really for the person selecting the course. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on maybe in the future, are you going to move towards allowing users to interact with other users on that particular course? Uh, well, we've had some discussion on that. And when you say user, it will probably be the selector of the course. That's 
Okay, we're losing we're losing audio again right now. Let's take a take a breather and let's Okay, we've lost audio for us. Okay, we've lost audio for a second. I right now have the uh, Open Sesame website up, so you can take a look at. Um, and this is uh, www.opensesame.com. That's the uh, home screen right there. And let me head back to uh, the convention floor and see if we can get them. Okay, okay we're, we're back, back on, on the convention, convention floor. floor. I just showed them your website and the URL to it. it. Um, we're, we're back, back on the convention, convention floor right now. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Right, we just uh, we switched mics, right? So okay, so you're not on the Skype mic anymore. Well, okay. On my Skype. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. You're sounding clear. That's, that's the audio. That's what we can hear him. Okay. Is that audio up? I can hear. I can hear both of you. It's a little low, but I can hear you. Okay. So we switched to a different mic. Is this sounding better now, Rick? Yeah, a lot less noise. I'm hearing him through there, though. Uh, I need that. Okay, here we go, Rick. We're back on here. We're not sure if you're hearing us yet, Rick. Uh, I can hear you. So, can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Rick, I don't know if you're hearing us. Uh, I am hearing you. Can you hear me? I haven't seen you Okay, Rick, we're talking, but we don't seem to hear you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I hear you folks pretty well. Uh, yeah. Kelly, you may want to go into your Skype options to turn on the speaker. Well, now I hear something, but it's so very low I can hardly hear it. <clears throat> uh, you may want to turn up your volume on your laptop. Maybe that's it. I hear it barely. You want to turn yours on? Yeah, we're going to have to go that route. Rick, are you hearing us? Rick, I do you hear you. Hearing us? Oh, but now it's getting feedback. But now it's getting feedback. You know, it's better to get the feedback than the static. Then we can hear Don's message twice. Now I don't hear anything. Okay, there you guys are. Okay, here we are. We're back on now. <laughs> All right. How's how are we sounding, Rick? It's, it's okay, okay right now. now. All right. So we're gonna have to build one of those cones of silence like the kids' parks. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, since since we're we're at ASTD, I, I figured let's get that. So when we have you on again, we can definitely learn more sure. about your your system. Um, but what what's been your experience so far with how well you're being received by the uh, the attendees here at ICE? Great. Good question. Well, uh, I think we're being received very well. They're, they're excited about the concept. Uh, we can explain what Open Sesame is in three or four sentences. And uh, of the hundreds of people we've seen, every one of them understands what we are doing and say, oh, what a great idea. I can't believe it took so long to do this. That's great. And so uh, to us, that, that, that is a real significant uh, you know, indication that there's a, there's a definite need out there for e-learning to be unlocked for content, uh, third-party content, to move from its uh, library, constricted kind of way of being sold to what we've all really come accustomed to buying, and that is just what we need, when we need it, at the price we want. So, uh, you know, I could probably, you know, uh, thank iTunes for helping to do that, you know, moving from where I used to have to buy a whole record album at a store somewhere when I was growing up there. Sure. If I want a song, I can buy it on my phone right now for 99 cents. And the same thing's true for the iPhone App Store. Uh, hundreds of thousands of applications that people develop from around the world and post there. Uh, or even when you look uh, in an industry like uh, the stock photography industry, which is probably the best analogy to our uh, company because uh, the buyer is a corporate buyer. Sure. I stock photo is a tremendous example of the ability for uh, a marketplace to crowdsource professional photographers from all over the world and then individual uh, marketing and training people that are building uh, advertisements or courses to come and purchase that. So, so those are all the, what I would say, is the, the trailblazers of the marketplace and that, uh, and that coupled with the, the fact that people didn't look in the e-learning in the industry 
already experienced those in their own different way, uh, I think will uh, really help pave the way for us to be accepted very well. All right. Are we doing okay on audio, Rick? So far, so good. You're on a roll. Okay. Um, so I, there's, there's a lot of vendors here, and I have to say you, you, your format is unique. I haven't seen any other vendors here that have that format. But the more successful you are, there's bound to be some competitors that start to emerge. So, you know, what do you think is going to really differentiate you from, um, you know, the, the few that are out there, but the, the like I said, if you're that successful, sure. the on flux of right. it. Well, I think there's a couple things that we plan uh, to do to be competitive and to stay, you know, at the, at the forefront. The first is to have a very simple to use and easy to navigate site. Uh, that's a very important aspect for anything that's online, but especially for something that's new and people have to come to learn it. And uh, amazing enough, even though many people can identify that, uh, even if you look around the industry today, many LMSs are not easy to use. And so uh, our, our focus really is to make sure Open Sesame has that, and the catalog is merchandised in a way, uh, and the search functions are, are just very quick and easy because the HR and training managers are already pressed for time. So we can make sure their buying experience is simple. Uh, the second thing is we uh, plan to grow very large very quickly because uh, in any marketplace, if somebody wants to go and shop, they want to make sure they have the broadest selection and that they have everything to be available for them. Uh, and because we're not setting the prices, but the industry, uh, the, the, the sellers sell the prices, we don't have to worry about those people updating those and changing them you know, as, they, as they see other courses become uh, available. So having a broad selection, having good prices, uh, and then also, as I mentioned earlier, having the questions. So we, we think because anybody can upload and they can respond to uh, things that may be going on in the world or in particular companies or even new laws that come out, there'll be training that will be created very quickly and it will be fresh and on point. Uh, it won't need to uh, look at something that may be three or four or five years old. So that's really the thing. Broadest, easiest to use marketplace, broadest selection, uh, uh, great prices, and a, and a very fresh. Great. Are we okay on still on audio? Right? We, that, that was great. great. Good, Good to hear everything. everything. Great. Great. So you're, you, I think you're in a prime position to help e-learning designers because you're, you're seeing the good, the bad, the ugly. And it's got to all come through whether you allow it to exist on your site or not. I'm sure some are trying to find their way on, onto your site. If, if, if you were to uh, give or could you give e-learning developers you know, one or two or three tips on what would make the content exceptional right. for, for your site? Uh, well, I would say uh, looking forward at the way uh, adult learners want to learn and thinking about the, the, uh, you know, the proliferation of handheld mobile devices, probably one of the most important things to do is to keep the course uh, courses short, at least the chapters short. And that short may mean that the whole a learning objective or point may be anywhere from two to five to seven minutes long. And that's it. So very, very short, so that people can uh, get that piece and move to the next one. Uh, the second thing is to think about how to deliver it on something other than just a um, you know a regular HTML screen or just in Flash, because I think the courses that are available uh, on mobile platforms uh, will be much more. Uh, accessible to people, they'll be taken more often, people can do it in between other things as opposed to setting the sign, not to do it. That's the second thing I would say to do that. Um, and the third is to really make it fun and interactive, which is always true of any training, right? It's not just going stuff. And so if they can think about how they could incorporate even some uh, quick games or something that uh, reinforces the learning but gives some entertainment. Uh, when you think about all the, the money and the time that people spend playing games on their phone, whether it's Angry Birds or something, sure. you can just wing a little bit of that in. I think that the uh, the value of the course goes up with people. So those will be the three topics that I would think. Do you have a, a a favorite course on the on the site yet? Not really. Uh, well, I, I would say the one that we seem to be getting. Uh, you know, most popular. Most popular is, and I'm not sure this is, is the most popular. I just see when it is one that uh, we built internally. Actually, uh, Kelly Weaver, our, our social media manager, built one introduction to, to Twitter. So you know, there's an example of a very short uh, course on a very uh, new topic, mm -hmm. and 
there are a lot of people that fear the word and wonder how to do it, uh, but they're not going to find that in some library that they're getting, you know, from, from one of the big uh, content uh, providers today. Sure. And so those kind of courses, I think, are, are great. They get people to try Open Sesame and see what it's like and, uh, you know, feel not just the experience of that course, but the full purchasing of the course is going to know about. So right. that's what I Okay. Rick, were you were you trying to cut in there? No, I could, could hear everything perfectly. perfectly. Oh, okay. We we got lucky. I, I'll I'll ask Ellie if uh, any any questions or tweets came through. That oh, okay, well, great. Right now, any questions? Rick? It's pretty quiet on eLearn chat, but I have a feeling everybody's at the show. <laughs> so well, now since you're here, I don't know if we got a chance to attend any of the of the sessions yourself, but. Right. Um, it just seems like a, a great opportunity to ask, especially for somebody at, at your level, even though learning never stops, right. no matter what the level you are, have you taken away anything from, from the show? Well, I wish I would have had time to, to uh, attend some of the sessions, uh, but fortunately for us, we've had a tremendous uh, draw at our booth. Great. Uh, you probably know we have a very exciting uh, kind of promotion that we do, mm -hmm. where uh, I think I mentioned earlier, we just about 700 of these hoodies. You know, to the show, uh -huh. and uh, I guess they can, they can see the front side of the hoodie, see, yeah, but you know, we'll and get and Kelly so, to show you the back so, side. So, uh, <laughs> so, we, we, so we give those 700 hoodies away to people that come to our booth, and we give uh, them a little, you know, a little pitch about Open Sesame. It's very simple. We swipe their card, so we know who they are, uh, and then uh, they go out and wear the hoodies out during the show, uh, uh, which of course makes it look like there's hundreds of Open Sesame. Uh, the Open Sesame followers. show. That's right. the ASTD and, show. Uh, and the reason they're wearing that is because we also give them a key and a keychain. Mm -hmm. And the keychain, of course, has OpenSesame.com on it, so they can remember where they got the keychain. Uh -huh. And because when they want to know more about Open Sesame, that's the piece of literature wood that they can go back to. So we don't hand out a bunch of paper that they end up throwing away anyhow from each other. Sure. We give them that keychain, which is a bottom of the line. And then key, 10% of those keys open lock boxes that we have with five around on the big floor, and uh, they basically, when they see somebody wearing an open sesame hoodie, let them try the lock. Mm -hmm. and if it opens, then they win what's in there, which is typically an iPad or a Nano or an iPad. Right. So uh, that that really is a great promotion. It gets a lot of people aware of who we are and what we're doing, uh, but it also keeps us really at that booth because it's a small hand on that yeah, you know, I could I could say from experience that even though it's Orlando and it's like six thousand degrees out here, it's still a lot of snow with the conference center because it's got a conference center. So. Good, good timing on that, but I, I guess we need to do this in Alaska or something so that you know we can put weirdo hoodies outside. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> we'll see them. We'll, you'll see them out, you know, probably you know, maybe at the bar or something. Not necessarily walking out waiting for that's the bus. That's true. But, uh, yeah. Like, no, actually, I, I saw them at, uh, at Technology. Uh, they were all over the place at uh, Devlin. Devlin, we're at Devlin, right? I believe right. you're at Devlin. So, like I said, I think we're, we're past the thousand hoodies that are out there. They're, they're I think I think we're probably there, good, and 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 Don, we're definitely going to have you on another time, and uh, we can show the site more and and <clears throat> have a clearer message because of all the audio issues. <clears throat> Though we did it, we were able to get quite a bit of it. It just that it was a little broken here and there. So anyway, Don, appreciate you coming on today, and um, we wish you a lot of success at the show, Terrence. Terrence I, guess I guess we'll, we'll be, be signing, signing off, off now. now. And, and have, have fun at the, the show. show. Don't forget. Don't forget next week we have uh, David Kelly from Open Sesame is going to be doing a of ASDs. Okay. So tune in for that. That's a uh, that channel, same bat station or same bat time. Yep. yep. That's the only announcement we have. Yep. yep. And, and he's, he's LD Dave on Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Or as Gina likes to say, Landy Dave. Landy Dave, 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 Dave the pirate. Dave. Anyway, I just lost your video. Um, <laughs> there, it's back. 
great, Rick. Anyway, guys, appreciate you coming out, and uh, and thank you much, Don. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, everybody. Well, we're definitely getting a lot of bad audio today from the convention floor. Uh, I'm in the studio near Los Angeles, and uh, they were in Orlando at ASTD 2011. Unfortunately, when you're in those big convention center buildings, there's a lot of metal. There's also a lot of people on cell phones, on laptop, uh, on laptops, on wireless, and on the uh, 4G and 3G cards. Terrence had a 4G card, and you could tell it wasn't really performing up to 4G standard. And the 3G card wasn't either, so definitely there were there was interference at the convention center. We're going to have Don Spear from Open Sesame back on in the very near future. Uh, I think what he's doing is really innovative, and um, we want to learn more about it and take a look at some of the stuff that they've done. Anyway, for eLearn Chat again, I'm Rick Zanotti. Thanks for listening, watching, and subscribing. We will see you next time. Have a good one.